All right. My dude, how's it going, Beaver? How's it going? Can you hear me? I can. Yep. Can yep. You? Okay. Uh, it's, it's starting to buffer up here a little bit, but okay, cool. Every, everything looking all right? Sounding all right? Yeah, what's up, man? Sick, dude. How's it going, man? Good to see you again. Thank you very much, first of all, for taking the time today. Uh, I'm so stoked to, to dig into this shit, man. It's awesome. Thank you. Dude, of course. Thank you, man. Yeah, totally. Man, wearing shades. I should have wore shades, man. <laughs> <laughs> it, it just kind of fell into like being some stupid thing, and then over time, all of a sudden, it was like, you know what? I, I It's been like this for damn near 200 interviews, so fuck it. Why not, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, so, so here, here on Grown Onion Live, my man, you know, basically we start, you know, early on, just as far as early interests and kind of how that developed into, uh, you know, uh, just a, a passion and, and, a, and a push to get into music yourself, uh, you know, moving into uh, more recently with different projects and uh, more or less today, you know, kind of like, kind of uh, focusing on MH Chaos and, uh, you know, and, and the last couple of years, you know, hearing you guys and seeing the development of what you guys have been doing. So stoked, man. I, I saw you guys at Sweat Fest, and you were one of the oh. acts that I wanted to stand behind. I normally don't like that shit. Like, when you watch, like, this is hardcore <laughs> or whatever, like, it kind of irritates uh, me, like, when you have all these people, yeah. you like, behind the stage. <laughs> but, but you're playing it. for sure. Like, I was like, man, I really want to see this dude play. And you crushed it, man. It was so, so sick. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate that. Totally. totally. Man, right, awesome. So, so Starting out as far as, you know, your, your personal interests and, and early on, you know, after developing your own interests, tell us about a band, a song, or maybe even an album that really resonated with you and kind of, you know, started making you look into, uh, you know, the genre or that per particular band a little bit more. Um, I mean, I feel like it started in sixth grade. I joined band and I was really into ska and punk. Uh, Misfits were probably my favorite band. I wore that shirt, you know, over wore that shirt all throughout middle school. Um, okay. But that kind of, I was, I was in, I was in middle school, and uh, you know, I joined the band, and uh, and so I kind of, but I got into ska and ska punk. You know, I was skateboarding back then, so um, yeah. I love I mean, that. That was, yeah, that was, a, that was a big part. Was uh, just being in band and skateboarding and listening to ska punk music. Like Cash Twenty Two, uh, Keith B. Knights, that album. That's probably one of my favorite albums. Sick, sick. What was that? Something where you know, within within band, was that something that you had like met other kids that were into you know the little bit the the, the aggressive stuff, or how did that how did that no. come about? <laughs> well, actually, no. I, I feel like I was the odd man out uh, most of the time, um, and you know, throughout middle school, I was the only one listening to harder stuff. I guess I w I would say it was probably my my older brother was really into black metal at the time and um mm. you know slipknot stuff like that um i wasn't so into it in middle school but i feel like that's where kind of like the bridge started forming you know it was at that in middle school going to high school mm. you know started okay. getting into a little harder stuff my, my ears started adjusting and you know started like you know i used to let, not like it and then you know i feel like going into high school seventh eighth to you know freshman year Okay. I really started listening to uh, a lot more harder stuff. Okay. And, and this might be jumping the gun a little bit too, but, you know, as, as far as what? picking up uh, drums and actually, you know, like playing, you know, the instrument, was that something where when you kind of went and looked back to like stuff like black metal or a little bit, ex you know, extreme stuff, you know, it gave you a different appreciation. Like that's coming from myself where at first I was like, what the fuck is this? But once I, once I was playing drums and I was doing something, you know, musically, and then I started listening to it, like looking into like, how the fuck are they playing this fast? Different appreciation. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> I definitely have to say that, you know, um, I'll, I'll probably talk about it a lot, but uh, I think it was freshman or sophomore year I got introduced to, like, Meshuga, and I hated it. I hated it. I'm like, what the <laughs> yeah. fuck is this shit? And then I got reintroduced, like, senior year, and going, uh, you know, into, into college, and just changed my whole life. Changed my whole perspective on drums. Changed my whole perspective on metal. Like they're the best band to walk this earth, and I feel like sometimes when things are uncomfortable, you shy away from them because it makes you feel uncomfortable. Sure. But it's really not. I feel like it made me a better uh, musician. Really, yeah. Um, I'm trying to uh, Thomas Hockey parts and whatnot. But yeah, 
Yeah. <laughs> I can talk. You talk about this shit all day. I don't want to do that. <laughs> so you mentioned like skating and and you know kind of you know those those alternate routes that you know being an opportunity as far as you know introducing different music that you might not have listened to through uh, either skate videos or video games or you know different different things like that. Uh, does does anything come to mind as far as bands that you were interest introduced to uh, uh, through you know the, this this uh, this uh, uh, interest of yours? Yeah, uh, actually, so there was a skate park that literally got built, was being built, you know, right at the time I started skating, uh, a, like a block down the street from me. So I was, uh, you know, I met a lot of older people and a lot of, I made a lot of older friends. I was, you know, I was skating there every day for three years. Um, and I, I know one, like Interpool and the Smiths, probably are the two bands that I would say mm. come, to, come to mind first. I got into the Interpool really really hard and through skateboarding and then one of my friends uh at the skate park gave me an, uh, a smith cd and um you know I, I i love the smiths you know i'm not gonna lie i, mean, I know how absolutely know, morrissey's kind of, morrissey you know morrissey but i mean the smiths man they got, <laughs> they got that's the hits yeah yeah okay i appreciate that well so you know now you know the, these years later, you know, being able to hold a physical copy of, of something of your own, you know, releasing a band, whether it's MH Chaos or other bands, uh, bring us back to your first time, uh, you know, have buying a CD or being gifted a CD. What was the what was the first CD or cassette tape that you uh, that you remember getting? Oh man, um, I mean, I I would say one of the first memories I have of being gifted one was uh, Christmas, I want to say 2000. I got Beastie Boys, Hello Nasty. Oh, sick. That rules. Yeah, that was... Yeah, I mean, I, I remember, you know, from, I would say my earliest um, memory was like holding a, a No Doubt CD when I was three, or a 311 tape. I, I, I specifically remember those two. It was a, a 311 tape and a No Doubt CD, like when I was four years old, something like that, but that I know that, uh, I know, I mean, I, I definitely <laughs> love music, it's been a part of my life ever since I can remember, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, totally, the the Tragic Kingdom, you mentioned, uh, no doubt, I feel mm -hmm. like that was like a really early tape that I remember having too, like, uh, I don't know if my, my sister bought it or if I had it, but like that, and like Red Hot Chili Peppers, some of their earlier stuff yeah. too. Yeah, for sure. I love yeah. that. With uh, so as far as what's the first time that you ended up holding on to something that it was something that you had made, whether it was just a a CD at like a local, uh, you know, like basin that you recorded, or how how did that come? Uh, are you saying like the first the first thing I've ever recorded? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I think it was in two thousand eleven, uh, November two thousand eleven. Uh, my first band, Bitter Thoughts, we we recorded. Um. I think you you kind of mentioned it, Nick Nick Nativo at the Nick uh, Studio Recording Studio, mm -hmm. New Lennox. He's the man. But uh, yeah, in 2011, uh, that was our first. We did uh, actually. I think it was a little before. I think it was 2010. Actually, uh, maybe beginning of 2010. It was that was our kind of trial phase. I would say we did like two songs, and uh, I mean. I, as a uh, as being in band and marching band in high school, I I was always uh, playing to a click for you know past okay. seven years. So when I got into the studio, it was it was pretty you know it wasn't too bad. Um, oh, I know a lot of people, nice. but I was playing to you know I was in a very hardcore marching band. My high school was very like serious, so they I was getting blasted with clicks, all you know for. Four or five hours, you know, every single time I practice. But okay, <laughs> but I was, yeah. Did you play drums so, yeah, in band? Yeah, I was in drum line. Oh shit! Okay, nice, nice. All right. Well, that 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 first time recording uh, was that something? That, did you actually play to a, a click track even then? Yeah, oh, yes. I've always played with I play with click tracks since I've ever recorded. Pretty much, I probably won't play with a. I mean. There was one recording I did without a click track, and it was just because I wanted that raw feel, and that was for Inferno, my, our second mm -hmm. EP. Um, but uh, I like playing with the click, though, just because it's... Yeah. I don't know. You okay, know. yeah. How do, you, know. how, do you, how do you feel about playing with the click? I've honestly never recorded with... I, I think I've had, I guess, maybe twice 
that I've recorded with one. And it would probably be a, a better – I don't know if it's a situation where uh, – I don't think it the, matters too much. Yeah, right. There's been certain times where we've had to go back a couple of times, so it would have probably helped. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like it, it helps it, exactly. It help that that's why you play with the clip because it helps it, the the engineer and it helps everyone else just be on time. But I mean, necessarily you don't have to, you know, if you know if you guys are all you know gelling enough together that you can, you know, it doesn't really matter because I mean, like the the recording that I did without the click. It turned out great, you know. I mean, I liked it. So. Yeah, for sure. But it's just—I sure. so, feel like it's just something that's instilled in me. Like since you know, band, I feel like it's just kind of like a I gotta, you know, I gotta, yeah, okay. you know, for my. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and it's funny too. You mentioned uh, band, so I I had played trumpet early on, you know, in band, but the uh, my draw was always to drums and kind of getting to that and it was funny like i had thought this one girl who was who was a drummer she was really cute and so i was like oh well maybe that'll be kind of my pickup line is you know i, I want her to you show me the drums and shit and, but it yeah. was a couple of days and i didn't even give a shit about her anymore i just wanted to play the drums <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Like, i just want this shit like let, let, let's let's jump on this <laughs> what uh what, what can you tell us about as far as your local music scene so you know you you have different bands and you know you start playing things and maybe even you know you're creating your own band uh, uh before that um how do you how do you end up finding you know local uh, uh venues and, and shows and bands um uh, are you saying uh, like kind of as a spectator? Right. Yeah. Are you saying okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I went. My very first show was across the street from the skate park where where I live. Um. It was at the VFW, and that was I went. I went to it was like some weird punk show when I was like in sixth grade, you know. Mm -hmm. And then didn't go to a show, and then I played my first show in eighth grade. Um. At our at our park district. And I remember recording. Uh, we we covered Foo Fighters ever long, but uh, yeah, I, I was I was hanging out with like older kids. But I feel like when I got to high school, um, Oceano was a was a big band, um, and so we start me and my friends started going to Oceano shows, um, and kind of I feel like from there is where we kind of got you know we just stuck in we just kind of rode that that scene and. Kind of that's where we kind of ended up here, um, but I met a lot of friends through that scene in high school. I went to so many, you know, it was like metalcore. Uh, we had, you know, uh, through the fire, Oceano, Weekend FM. So they were like the three kind of genres that were kind of big at the time. But um, yeah, we went to a lot of shows in high school, and I met a lot of friends. And I, you know, I found I found beatdown music my freshman year, and and my friends. We all kind of just started, like, you know, gravitating towards the heavier, ignorant Neanderthal stuff. So, <laughs> <laughs> I found, I found Unit 731 on MySpace and built upon frustration, all that good stuff. But I, I would say it was it was high school that really, uh, I would say, paved the way to start after high school. You know, we just started playing show, or we just, we just made music. And then, uh, I mean, fortunate, fortunate enough, the people that I used to go see shows with were in another band, so they kind of took us under a wing as we entered the hardcore scene. And, uh, you know, they kind of, it was Warhound, the band with Warhound, if you're familiar. Oh, okay, but, um, sure. Damn. Yeah, so, but a lot of them, they, uh, they definitely, like, kind of guided us into the scene now, and that was back in 2011, 2012. Okay, shit. I don't know why I was thinking Oceano was a was a Ohio band. So they they're native to Chicago, huh? Yeah. So actually, oh, their their uh, their guitarist, um, their our OG guitarist, um, he's in Chaos Fear with me. He's in what? I'm sorry. He's, he's in Chaos Fear with me. Oh, uh, my oh, band. Okay. Yeah, band. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh no, shit. Okay. So, are they still are they still yeah. a band or no? Uh, I think so. Uh, yeah, I think they're the singers keeping it alive, but yeah. Oh, okay. Sure they okay. <laughs> it drives to me. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the, I mean, we, I, you know, they were, I think once uh, my friend, my friend, his name's Jeremy, uh, once he left, I think, uh, you know, I kind of started, you know, going towards 
other scene or the more the hardcore scene. You know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah, yeah. Because they what? They, yeah. Do did, uh, did are any of these spots still around that you went to? You know these early, uh, you know initial shows uh, or, or the spots that you still uh, attend shows to at all? Uh, I would say no. Mm. No, there was it, it was it was because it, it was around my area, which is the the northwest suburbs of Chicago. Okay. Um, so I feel like a lot of it just gravitated towards just the city mostly. Um, the two spots I went to though were in just close suburbs right by me. Um, but I mean, th- they were great venues. I had good times. You know, those are those are those are good times. You know, cutting Going, the teeth. You know, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, again, <laughs> punch. <and kick. laughs> how, how does your first drum kit come about? So I know you mentioned you played snare and band. Um, was that something where you know initially it was like a rental situation? Did you have a, a, a snare gifted to you, and then how does a full kit come about? So I joined band in third grade to play trombone because I was in the sky, right? <laughs> but okay. it didn't last. It didn't, it didn't last very long. I ended up starting using the, the the music stand and then I got like a drum pad. My 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 brother gave me like a Remo, you know those Remo pads. Okay. The 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 practice. I would just I would start playing drums in my room and my mom just kinda saw it and she kinda got me a, a, a premiere. She got me a premiere kit in uh I wanna say fifth fifth grade. Yeah, it was fifth grade. Okay. Okay. Got a premiere kit for the, the the local music shop. Okay. What 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 was what was like the was this the the normal you know like shop that you were going to as far as you know if you needed new symbols or you needed or was there other shops around? No. Um. So there was this place called Rosa Music right down the street from me, and uh, they they were pretty big. Now they're pretty small, so not anymore. But uh, yeah, they, I used to take drum lessons there, so I, I would take drum lessons there. I got my first kit there, and uh, you know, obviously, cymbals are expensive, but I, um, <laughs> right. I kind of yeah. So I didn't see I, I haven't seen I didn't see new cymbals until you know pack you know in the past five years, you know, <laughs> six years. Like <laughs> okay. Uh, how was it as I far as the, with the, with lessons, you know, that's kind of one thing where it can be a real make or break, you know, moment for somebody who's trying to break into, you know, into music and learning. Did, did you have a positive experience out of that? A good teacher? I did. Um, I, I would have to say though. Uh, okay. So my first, so I got drum lessons, drum set lessons, and I, I only took them for like a year. And it wasn't because he was a bad teacher. He was a good teacher. He was a great drummer. Uh, I just felt like I, what we would do is bring in, like I would bring in a CD of whatever I'm listening to. And then he would like show me how to play it. And then over time, I kind of realized I can kind of just do that myself. So oh, right. I started just, so for the first, you know, three years of playing, two years of playing drum, three years, whatever, I would just kind of play in a rush I was playing to Fall Out Boy, playing to Blink-182, you know. I would just play whatever is in my basement. Uh, whatever CDs I had, I would put it on and just play it, play through it through the record. Um, I would have to say, though, once I got into high school with marching band, you know, that changed, that change, you know. I'm so happy I did that because it really, it really took me, like, much further than I thought I would ever go, you know. Uh, I played snare throughout high school. I played bass my freshman year, but the teachers are, you know, that our, our, uh, our caption had our, our main guy, he taught me so much. And I could say the same thing for after high school. There was another man. Um, his name is Dave Oriente. He's the best drummer I ever knew. Mm-hmm. And he taught me, he taught me so much. I don't know. Like, it's just, I have a lot of, in drumline, I, so after, high school i did four more years of drumline that's like it's kind of hard to understand but it's like it's not like school related but you had to like try out to be in this, this drumline and it was called a uh, winter guard international but oh okay. so i met yeah so i see so yeah so it's like indoor drumline pretty much you do it in the winter and you compete but you have to try out for it so but i met a like one of the best probably the best drummers you could ever meet, you know, 
And so I just kind of saw them and I just played with them. I'm like, you guys are the best on the line. So I would have to say, like, it's really nice playing with people who are better with, than you because, you know, you can just push yourself to get better because you see some other people do it and like, I want to do that. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Totally. So, <laughs> I, 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 I think I was very fortunate of the people that brought me up into drumming, I would have to say. Okay. And I'm thankful for it. So, as, as far as, you know, like fast forward a little bit, you know, when you have the opportunity to upgrade something, when you're looking at a lot online to, you know, like a musician's friend magazine or something, what was, what was the first thing that you were kind of looking for? Did you want a double bass pedal? Was there a new snare that you were really wanting to add? What was, uh... Yeah, I, I would say the yeah the first thing was the double bass pedal. You know, <laughs> okay. listening to, listen to Metallica and stuff like that. You're like, man, I want I want to play whatever. What's that one? You know that song. I remember I wanted to play that song really bad. So yeah. I remember getting a sh a really shitty Pearl, like you know, single chain, but I loved it. You know, <laughs> but it was really <laughs> shitty. But, I used the crap out of it until I got like a Pacific, which was the next next step up. But um, okay. right now I have uh, Pearl Eliminators. I definitely want to get the Demonators. That's my next my next goal step. The Demonators. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean they, they look sick. I've never used them, but they they, they seem sick. Shit, and lots of great people using yeah, them. So. Yeah, I'm a big Pearl guy, so I'm I like Pearl. What what what, what about you? I have uh, DWs right now, the oh. five five thousands. Um, I had okay, uh, well. I'm trying to think of before. I I maybe I didn't have another. I think before. I think it was still DW, but it was a single pedal um, that I had gotten like some years ago. I don't even know if I still have that thing. Uh, <laughs> but but yeah, I, I mean, as far as with that, and I think right now I'm looking at snares. That's kind of my uh, my next thing. Do you have a a, a collective of, of different things like that on hand, or do you have the same type of stuff that you keep, uh, you know, for live no, and, I, uh, and studio? Uh, yeah, I kind of just keep it all the same. Um, I definitely want to get a new snare. Mm. Um, that I'm looking into uh, brass shells. You know, I feel like that's the thing. That's the way to go. Those are the best sound. Right. I feel like brass. Yeah. yeah um, sure. <laughs> I, I really want, you, you know, you know, those uh, pearl free floaters. Yes. Have you seen those? Yeah. Yeah. Those are loud. That, yeah. That, that's the snare I really want is the free floater. Just because you, oh, okay. you can make it whatever you want, you know? But I, uh, I know uh, I know my man from the Acacia strain. He uses that and then he has the Evans hybrid head on it. And if you ever hear like them loud, them. it's like you can be blocks away and fucking hear that thing. It's insane. <laughs> so loud. Yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> what, what were what were some early songs that you remember you know once you were sitting down or maybe that first time you know going uh, uh for for lessons that you really wanted to learn and, and and be able to play with oh man uh <laughs> two songs come to mind i guess i remember i wanted to learn enter sandman i think well, that was like one of the first songs that okay. i asked to learn enter, enter sandman and then um wow, what was the other one all my all my all my best friends are metalheads by Less Than Jake. That was another song okay. that I wanted. <laughs> yeah. rules. I love it. <laughs> as, 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 <laughs> so you mentioned like your first shows and, and uh, you know, I kind of wanted to touch on a couple of other things as far as when you're first getting into, you know, these things. Uh, what, what ended up being your first band? What was that? My first band? I, do, you wanna, do you want my, my first like band that really didn't matter or like my first band that actually did matter? I mean, go with both. I, I, I love right. hearing all this so, shit, dude. So, so I, <laughs> all right, awesome. So I joined a band in, like, seventh grade with, like, a bunch of high school. I had a high school friends, And uh, it, it, was a, it was pretty short-lived. Uh, but I played one show with them in eighth grade. We were called Ludium. I don't know why. <laughs> Lud Ludium, Ludium, Ludium is vaginal discharge. And for some reason, I don't know why. The singer oh. chose that name. He wow. did. But, that's, that's pretty yeah, that's weird. harsh. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. It's a weird name, right? Ludium? Like, why, why? Never heard Ludium? that. Ludium. <laughs> but, um, no, but then after high school, after I had more time, because marching band took up a lot of time, um, I would say uh, Bitter Thoughts was my first band. 
and that um we uh we kind of we kind of I feel like we we met um our 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 basis on chip uh, I'm sure he's in MH Chaos and Sector hold my own he's a goat um he uh we I I feel like I met him like the for the first time at the rum it was the Rumble in 2010 it was the uh, hardcore uh Chicago's hardcore festival but uh so in 2010 2011 we got together and then we kind of started, we started playing a lot of shows. We, we played, we made some music. And then, like I said, Warhound kind of took us under. And, uh, I remember, I think the summer of 2012, we were playing shows, like two shows a month. You know, it was, it was a lot for us. I mean, we, and we barely had music and we're still playing shows today. I don't know how we have like nine songs, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but, uh, but that was my first band, Bitter Thoughts, and you know we 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 went on tour twice uh, with Silverhammer, um, our, our 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 boys from Indiana, um, but uh, yeah, I mean that that kind of like Bitter Thoughts was like the start, and then we all kind of we all started making our own bands, but we're all in the same we're all in the same bands, so like we all share a practice spot. There's like nine of us that in you know incorporate six seven bands you know so it's kind of nice because bitter thoughts kind of like made our web a lot bigger you know what i'm saying so we were able to connect with more people and make more music and have better time yeah i appreciate that and and you touching on you know having uh having this the small run or travel and you know uh as far as with uh, with bitter thoughts what can you tell us about those runs you know where did everything go all right? Did you know you have some mishaps with the vehicles? Did anything happen with your drums? How'd that go? Um. Okay. So the first, I think the first tour we did in 2013. Um, man, that was a good time. But we just took a, a sir, uh, my, my my friend Serge. He's in he's in Silver Hammer and he's in Body Bag and Inferno. Um, but he had he had this van. And it was like the shittiest van, no AC. Um, <laughs> broke down like twice. <laughs> it broke down twice. No, maybe no. <laughs> so it broke down twice, and then I forgot to put gas in it one time going into the mountains, and so we were oh stranded. So we like pretty much, pretty much like broke down like three times, pretty much. <laughs> but I, I, don't, I, I don't think that really mattered to anyone. Um, we were late to a lot of shows too. <laughs> Yeah, our, our first show was in Denver, so you know, we you know was, we just went straight fifteen hours, and we were late as fuck, <laughs> and there were still people. There. So the thing that surprised me is a lot of the shows we were late to, people were waiting for us, and we're like, man, we feel like shit. But also, it's kind of cool that they waited, you know, because it was like one of those things was like, like you know, we've been a band for one to two years. The same with Silverhammer, you know, maybe three. And you know, there's people still waiting for us. I mean, that that was that that tour kind of was just like, wow, I I love this, and I want to do this more, um, just for the experience factor. Not even just like meeting all the people. I mean, was awesome. I mean, I talked to some, I made a lot of friends going across the states, even with the mishaps. Um, I don't <laughs> even think it. Uh, no one even cared, really. I, I don't really think anyone was mad or anything. We just, oh, we're broke down? All right, we're just going to walk outside and go check out, you know, just the scenery and stuff. So <laughs> That's sick. <laughs> All right. I mean, sometimes it's, it's, it's how you roll with those punches. You know what I'm saying? It's like I can, you can sit here and get pissed off or, like, take care of it and try to keep on pushing, you know? I mean, it's, uh, that's, that's a good approach. I appreciate that. With, with uh, yeah. you know, from earlier on, from you know these first couple of shows, and let's say even through today, uh, what what is a what is a pre-show ritual or something just to kind of help you get centered as far as uh, uh, before before playing, as far as practicing or anything that helps you, you know, like slow down a little bit before going out. And how has that changed over the years if it has? Um, I don't think it's really changed much. Um, I've been performing since I was twelve years old. Um, mm. you know, like besides, besides shows, I've been performing in bands since, since, since fifth, sixth grade. So, but at every single time I perform, 
I, I get the nervous feeling either every time, no matter what it is. You know, if I, I've done it a thousand times or I haven't, I still get nervous. Um, I just, I don't really have a, a pre show ritual. I kind of just, kind of like, you know, maybe five minutes before the set, just go off on my own and kind of just think about what's going to happen. Mm. You know, just go through whatever this or that. Uh, smoke weed usually helps. <laughs> um, Center. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's probably usually the best. Um, but no, I don't think it's really changed. Um, actually, I, I I will say this. I mean, I actually, uh, for most of my life, I would say for half of my performing career, I didn't smoke while I performed. But there was this one bass drummer who was the best bass drummer I've ever met. And he, before a competition, we're like all like suited up, about to go, you know, warm up. He goes off in good time. And I'm like, how the fuck does this guy like smoke weed and then just play amazing? And so like ever since then, yeah. that was that was in 2009. Um, I think I started smoking weed. And playing <laughs> okay. <drums like> that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, and it's one of those things like. You know, it's it's funny to me because I, I was just touching on this like a, a few days ago, maybe even like last week or one of my last interviews. But it, it's weird because I don't feel nervous about the playing aspect. What always like is where the nerves kicks in is me like building up my kit to bring out before playing. Like it's always been a thing to me for, as far as like not taking too much time building up and then tearing back down, you know, or like rushing too fast to build up, you know, and then be ready to play. And then all of a sudden you get through like the first couple songs. It's like, oh, my God, like all this crap is so off. <laughs> you know, like the snare is too high. And you're like, oh, it yeah. sucks. No, yeah. When you, when you, when you get, when you get that, uh, you know, that backline kit that just, you got to deal with. And yeah. like everything's moving. <laughs> I think actually my, I think my worst pet peeve is just the bass drum movement. I think I could deal with most things, but when that bass drum moves, God damn it. Like, that's just, that, that's just, that's just a, you know, it's like a tilt. You're just like, God damn it, throughout the whole show. Or or a double bass, the double bass thing, like, comes off and I only got one pedal going on or something like that. Yeah. But that happens when you, you know, set up some, I mean, it happens because you, you sometimes you are, I think you're right, you know, it's kind of like, we got to we gotta set up or, you know, you got to kind of get going, you know, you got other bands, you're on a schedule. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that, that could be stressful, but. I feel like, yeah, that's probably the only stressful part that I really get out of it is, like, t uh, technical, logistical issues, you know? Right, um, right. I mean, there's when it, there's been times where I forgot parts, and I hate that, and I had to, like, start the song over. But, I mean, I feel like I've just been in so many bands that it will happen. <laughs> but I try not. <laughs> right. that's, that's, I feel like my biggest thing is I just try – I my thing is I don't want to break. I just – want to keep the song going so i i don't ever want to stop really yeah because i hate that feeling i hate that feeling of like oh fuck what's next and then everyone's sitting there and i'm like oh shit <laughs> i gotta start the song <laughs> over <It's so> <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> okay yeah I, I mean there's there's certainly you know like ever once i i feel like it was one of the first times playing with with uh, prison suicide my current band where uh just still getting used to like i i remembered all the songs but it was like looking at a track list, you know, and looking at a title and being like, uh oh, or maybe it's a newer song, you know, and you're like, right. how's, how's right. this one start again? Like, I, I'm supposed to, I'm supposed just to start. Get the mind. <laughs> yeah, right. 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 Uh, but yeah, those are, the, it's always great to hear that it's not just you, you know what I'm saying? It's, uh, you, you hear, you talk to other people, especially drummers, and it's like, okay, we're, we're straight. <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. it's, like, it's, it's one of those weird things where it's like, it just, for some reason, the nerves and you're on stage and just your mind goes blank and you're like, what? What's going on? And then, I, like, I hate, yeah. That's, like, yeah. one of the worst things. But yeah. uh, I feel like easy. that. I feel, yeah, I think an experience, I would say, just practice probably helps that a lot more. <laughs> I mean, especially yep. with me, obviously. Because yeah. if, you, if you've just if you've done it a billion times, then you're so confident when you go on stage. Um that you're not gonna have, you're not gonna have those problems or or those doubts yep. or you know insecurities. Yep, for but, sure, um, for sure. For you know, from from these earlier shows, as far as you know, uh, uh, moving through your your musical path, uh, what bands you know for now 
were were uh, were introduced to you, you know, through these acts that that you're a fan of, or maybe some of the uh, the the local Midwest bands that you know that you've really followed uh, since you know playing uh, some of these shows. Maybe not the earlier stuff, but maybe even recently, uh, you know, just from something that you'd never even heard of that you played with them and you you become a fan. Um, man, that's a tough question. <laughs> Not, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I don't listen to too much new music. I'm trying oh, okay. to think of a band that really, um, like I do, but what things keep in your rotation? I mean, then that would, I mean, that would even be that's that's even something to touch on. Oh man, uh, I love that reaction. That's that, that means something good. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I, yeah, I listen to a, I listen to a lot of different music, but I feel like uh, it's most of the time it's. I, I listen. I like. I've been listening to a lot of Michael Jackson lately. Off the uh, wall. Uh, that okay, album. Okay. Really cool. Um. Man, I listen to Meshuggah usually a lot. Co Coheed and Cambria is one of my favorite bands. I, I I'm really bad because like I I stick to bands and I kind of overplay them, but like I just love them so much usually. And uh, <laughs> um, like Bjork. Bjork is another one I fucking love. Um. There was one band I don't want to say like I, Death Grips. Um, oh I saw my God. in Riot. So I I, I I listened to them once. I listened to them once, and then uh, I went. Yeah, <laughs> Adam told me yeah. on, on the music that I had, that I like. Um, no, I I saw Death Grips on Acid um, at, at Riot Fest, and it was like the first <laughs> time like I really really checked them out, and. Uh, and man, that 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 changed my fucking life. That was crazy. Zach Hill is insane. insane. He was like just he was just doing a drum solo the whole time. And <laughs> I was like, how 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 is this a band? And then like it was crazy because it was electronic, but it was heavy, you know. And so like I can understand why a lot of people don't like it, but I fucking love it. And then I really got into Death Grips after that. I think that was I don't know five years ago. You know, I, I from from even a beat standpoint, from somebody who like you know looks for for rap music or hip hop in general, and and is just looking for something that has like a real hyphy beat or something that you know just kind of gets you going. I don't see how you don't like Death Grips. Honestly, same thing from the first time that I heard them. I'm like, I have no idea what this is. It's insane. Seeing them, I've never seen them live, but seeing live videos and watching Zach playing uh, and on top. Of, I'm trying to think of uh, the. Uh, keyboardist and uh the dude andy. behind andy a andy him uh, the whole band honestly i mean everybody you have like mm -hmm. everything cohesively somehow that's this insane madness but yet still works you know it's like and then, and then zach up there like you mentioned doing the like, solos the whole time like this doesn't make sense i can't do this for 30 seconds without it somehow <laughs> dropping sticks or, or or losing everything you know as far as where i'm at it's insane. <laughs> he, he's, he, he's one of those drummers that I'm like, oh, my God. Like I would say Zach Hill, Thomas Hakey. Um, man, there's another guy. This guy, Greg, of this band. Um, why can't I think of the, the name? God damn it. I'll get I'll, I'll get back to you on that one, but um, okay. I would say another band that like is in my repertoire is Faith No More. Anything, Mr. Bungle. Yeah, I love Mike Patton. Yes. I love totally. Patton so much. <laughs> what 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 do you think of his uh, work with the the EP that he did with Dillinger? Oh, I love that. Oh yeah, Dillinger's another great band. I love I, I love that that little EP that they did. I mean, he's perfect. You know, like I feel like it was like he's like one of the, you know they you could definitely he like fit right in you know, but he also I made agree. it his own. Yeah, right. So it was, I, that whole story of them like just I I, I appreciated how they didn't want to use them because they just wanted to make their own, you know, thing, you know, without it being something that it was just getting big because of who the vocalist was. Like, I appreciate that, but that EP, man, that thing was like, it was so perfect. I, I absolutely love that. Yeah, Dillinger is fucking slamming. Right. Dude, that band's so good. 
<laughs> so, so as far as MH Chaos, we're gonna fast forward here. You know, as far as you know, you had uh, the initial initial bands and different you know acts shows that you've played uh, through the years. MH Chaos, we have a few years ago. Here starts up. Tell us about the first memories of uh, how you became involved in the band and maybe earlier tracks or or riffs that you heard. Uh, you know, starting the foundation of the sound. So the band pretty much is Bitter Thoughts without our singer. Okay. Um, so. T- TJ and Anchit. Anchit was our basis of Bitter Thoughts. TJ was our guitarist of Bitter Thoughts. But now MH Chaos is me. And then oh, Anchit on guitar. Yeah, and Anchit on guitar and TJ on guitar. And then we have uh, Evan on bass and Davey on vocals. So me, me, Anchit, and TJ have been playing, you know, since 2011, 2010. So we, I think TJ kind of came to me. Um, and asked me to to write drum tracks for uh, like, I, he he pretty much wrote um, I think him and Anche I don't I don't want to like I don't know who was exactly but I'm pretty sure they Anche and TJ I think mostly TJ wrote the first EP those four songs and um, yeah they they just asked me to do the drum tracks I was do, I was doing Peace of Mind and Inferno and Body Bag uh, me and TJ are in Body Bag too so. Um, okay. And that, um, yeah, so we, we, we did that. We went in the studio. Um, I mean, there, it was, it was cool. I, I didn't, I didn't think it would, you know, reach as many people as it did. And I'm really thrilled it did. Um, because, you know, we've got to play amazing shows and met amazing people through it. Um, and, you know, we, we've all been playing, um, shows, you know, for the past 10 years. Um, mm. uh, but, you know, I feel like this band kind of, brought us out you know into uh un- uncharted territories you know that we haven't seen before um you know it's better thoughts i was in bitter thoughts you know peace of mind inferno body bag you know oh, those are all the bands before mh chaos and i've been playing them in chicago i played it in a little new york you know i got to see this and that with those bands but i feel like mh chaos kind of brought us to more people you know and it was it was it's really cool because you know I feel like your like hard work kind of like shows when when more people notice, mm-hmm. but you know we haven't stopped. You know, you know we've been we've been continually making music, all of us. You know, for the past ten years, and um, right. we're not gonna stop. You know, we're we're all we're all still making our own more bands. You know, other than MH Chaos too. So, um, just really thrilled about how it came out, and awesome that we I have a fucking record. Um, man, yeah, and it, and it, it, really it rules. Cool. <laughs> yeah, thank you. thank you so much. Yeah, we we put a lot of work into it, so I really appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. You yeah. know, I mean, and it's funny too. You know, it kind of it kind of goes as as a statement. You know, when you go through and like you mentioned, you know, you've played music for ten years and you've played. You know, you've been in the scene for all the all this time, and then all of a sudden, you know, you have something that that does pop off. You know, it, it's kind of a statement as far as for younger you, musicians where. Maybe the thing that you're you're doing right now, you know, isn't necessarily uh, not that those other you know earlier things uh, that yourself or even you know, my myself, you know, are are something that are irrelevant. You know, you kind of cut your teeth and you have fun with those things, but uh, you never know if it's just going to be down the you know years down the road, you know, where all of a sudden it's like, oh, all of a sudden this thing's going to pop off. Like, all right, cool. <laughs> you know? So I mean, yeah, just, right, just exactly. sticking sticking with exactly. it and. I, I think, you know, having fun and having the integrity behind, you know, doing what it is that, you know, you're wanting to do as opposed to following, you know, whatever the 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 current, you know, trending thing is, you know, just ha- having a good time with it. I, exactly. I that I feel like sure. That's the most important part, I would say, with my bands and the bands that I'm in, I just definitely want to have fun. I mean, if you're not having fun in a band, what are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I just want to play. You know, like that's that's pretty much it. I've been playing my whole life, and I don't want to stop. And I want to have a good time. You know, that that's that's what should be bands about. Just having a good time with your friends, playing music. Dude. Yeah, that's and I, and I'm very fortunate, I'm very fortunate that the bands I'm in, you know, I get to do that. So it's a it's a it's a it's a beautiful thing. It's it's one of those things, you know, when you you hear some of the things as far as drama or issues within other bands where it's like, man, 
I just got to sit here and really like embrace, like appreciate the hell out of you guys right now. Cause I, I, I could not, I, I could not imagine being involved in stuff like that. <laughs> but, uh, as far as what can you tell us about this, this, the, the, the logo the you know, so you guys released the EP, the MH chaos EP and you know, the, 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 the hockey mask looking uh, logo. What, what, what is that? So, um, actually, uh, one of my good friends, Justin, he was uh, my singer of Peace of Mind, and he is the bassist of Sector, and he is the oh, bassist okay. of my band, Illusion of Choice. Um, but he's been around since he's been a you know, Anshit and Justin, uh, they've been that's who Anshit uh, introduced us to Justin. But Justin, um, as we we were you know looking for ideas. Um, the the band was talking about um man I, I don't I'm gonna get this wrong so I don't even want to say it. it was like Mussolini there's like an old Mussolini like face like propaganda type thing and the band's called MH Chaos which is named after um a CIA program um I want to say in the 60s or 70s don't quote me on that um but uh, it's so it, I don't want I, I want I don't want to say we're political people I feel like we're all pretty down the middle. But, um, you know, I feel like it's more of a satire thing. But so there is this, you know, face that Mussolini had. And I was looking through old, uh, Justin sent me a bunch of just old doodles he had. And he just, he doodled this face. And um, I was like, this, this is like perfect, you know, can we use that? And so, yeah, Justin let us use it. And it's been like our uh, our logo. And I, I think it, it fits well because it's, you know, kind of, Kind of went where we're we're going for the sort of like satirish propaganda sort of Big Brother thing that's kind of going on. Okay. But uh, you know, our friend Justin just he's he's a great he's a great draw drawer, and uh, I love his artwork. So yeah, he's uh, he's, yeah. he's the man behind the mask. <laughs> Justin, <laughs> okay. shout, shout out Scepter. Okay, all right, hell yeah. What what can you tell us about as far as the you know the the drums for chaos and, and uh, you know, the riffs that inspired the drums. Uh, one thing, you know, with this band, what I hear is I, I feel like it's something where, you know, you and, and whether it's on or anybody else in the writing process are, are very involved together, you know, as far as having a, you know, having a part where it might just be, you know, a chug, you know, regular breakdown ordinarily, uh, so to speak, you know, it seems like you guys kind of have something where the rhythms are constantly changing or, you know, the, the tempo towards things, uh, what can you tell us about, you know, like th that writing process and, you know, you guys working together? Um, you know what? Um, I would say, you know, I, I as a huge Meshuga fan and uh, I love I love syncopated rhythms. You know, that's obviously a drummer's cake. You know, syncopate syncopation is it's just very fun. Um, so it's really a. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I've always wanted a sort of like staccato, you know, syncopated rhythm sort of thing going on. I just feel like uh, with MH Chaos, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of bands don't do that in the scene that we're in, you know, a lot of like different rhythms and a lot of different, um, you know, influences. Um, as Adam said, like Latin beats, you know, like I, I put a lot of stuff like that. And I feel like that comes from like System of a Down, which is kind of weirdly enough. But you know, <laughs> System of a Down has a really they do a lot of stuff like that. You know, where they incorporate a lot of different sort of beats into the metal, and uh, it just creates a, a fresh sound. You know, and uh, so sick. I, I don't want to say like I uh, I intentionally did that. I just kind of feel like you know, as me, Anchi, and TJ as and, you know, as we've all progressed as musicians, that it just kind of just went that way, you know. And uh, I feel like just it's it's pretty it's a pretty nice organic way we write. I, I love writing with TJ and Anche. It's pretty easy, um, and I feel like that's a big that's a big thing when you're in a band. You know, is is being able to work with people and being able to hey, this is my idea. And then for them to either like it or not, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a process, but it, it's pretty smoothly. Um, we're all pretty liberal, and we all listen to each other. You know, we all take criticism. So, 
you know, we can, I feel like you got to have the right people to write with and uh, kind of understand what you're going for. And I think Anch and TJ and Evan, they all, they all kind of know what, what kind of drummer I am. So sometimes maybe their riffs, they cater to me. And sometimes I just write the parts, you know, I know Anch has come up with some stuff that he like, sounds like I would have played it or something. But um, yeah, I just think that, you know, when you, when you're playing with people for so long that you kind of just you gel, you know, and you kind of know how they work and that, uh, you know. Okay. I, I appreciate that. You know, and it's just kind of what, a, I guess more of like the inspiration was just some of those things as, you know, as far as the rhythms where, you know, like it seems like maybe initially it was a, a basic, you know, pattern or it was a basic measure and you came in and you're like, well, what if we try this or we change this up a little bit? But uh, the, the kind of mutual gelling uh, over, over years playing together, uh, you know, inspires each other. It sounds like that's, that's awesome. That rules. I'm fucking sick. Um, yeah, def definitely. What, oh, as far as your setup um, live versus when you're in the studio, do you use extra things, uh, you know, uh, uh, when you're, when you're playing vice versa or is there anything where, you know, do you keep pretty basic? Uh, and, and what are, you know, the, the must haves when you're going to uh, set up your kit? Um, so <laughs> I'm pretty, I'm pretty liberal about it. Um, I would say through the years of playing, having to adjust to certain kits, I kind of, I mean, I, I usually try and have a China for every set. That's pretty much the only thing, but like two okay. symbols in the China and then just a four piece. That's like my minimum that at least I would want. Obviously, you know, if it's my own show, I'll have a little more symbols. Um, you know, but I feel like, um, I feel like, you know, when you, when you go play other places, you're not using your kit. Um, I kind of just deal with it. So I, you know, I can play mostly on anything. I, I, I play with a shitty kit for like most of my career. So like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so like I'm used to it. So it's like pretty much just, you know, the, the standard two, 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 crashes and a, and a, and a China, you know, double bass. That's what I need. You know, um, okay. I can, I can make it happen. Sick. Okay. What, what about as far as this newest LP, what can you, you know, do you, do you remember a uh, symbol set up and what drums you had? Uh, was there a particular snare? Uh, yeah, the, the pig squealer, there's this pig squealer, uh, pork pie. Okay. That, that, that one, that's killer. I like that. Um, I actually think, I oh mean, I can't remember for this, if it was either this one, I did like two different setups. Um, no, I, I kind of mess around, you know, I, I have a five piece kit, but I usually play with a four piece live, but I think like for recordings, I kind of put in more stuff. Um, for recordings, okay. I try and use as much as I can, actually. And then, um, just because we're recording, you know, you want to make it as produced as possible, I mean, in my opinion, um, with just the sounds and have the options that you want. But when it comes to playing live, not many people, you know, notice little detail. So for live, I just want to be on time and I want to just get through the set. <laughs> <laughs> oh good <laughs> so, you know, that's when I, that's when I get through it just make sure everyone's on time and stuff like that so um yeah uh i'm not i'm not i'm not too, not too picky so pretty much i'm not too picky about what i'm playing yeah, yeah. now okay. you gotta joke okay. sure right. and so and, and recording this album with nick we were talking about him uh earlier uh at the at the nook what can you tell us about you know recording with him and and possibly a learning experience, you know, r r recording with him as opposed to with uh, other producers. Oh, oh man, he is. Uh, I I I love him the best. Um, shout out Nick from the recording studio. Um, he really he really pushes you as as a musician, which I, what what I love about him the the most um, than other engineers that I've worked with, because um, you know he you know. He, Obviously, he knows that uh, I'm going to play with a, a click, but even with me, you know, he'll say one more time, seven times, you know, <laughs> he, 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 wants, he wants to, he wants to get the best take he can out of every single one. So I, I really enjoy working with him when I, I, he's my first 
option, and he's probably the guy I would love to go to for all uh, all of my recordings, just because he's uh, he just doesn't let he just doesn't let you know he doesn't let you you know hack it. You know what I'm saying? He he makes you kind of hey, you could do better. You know, and there's not a lot of people. I feel like I you know I've worked with like four others, and they didn't give a shit what I did. They they're like, oh, you were clear with that? <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go on to the next spot. I'm like, oh well, if I'm okay with it, are you okay with it? You know, so and, yeah, and right. so what I see, Nick cares. You know, he Nick's like, you know, you can do better. He, he you know, he he gives he gives input. You know, we can ask him advice. Um, you know, he's he's he was our first. You know, like what we've been recording with him since 2010. So for 12 years we've been recording with him, um, and uh, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> you know, because he, he he started like 12, 14 years ago. So, you know, we've been going to him almost oh, ever wow. since he started started the thing. So, um, but yeah, and yeah, he, he definitely is a sweetheart and he's, uh, he, he, he's a good guy. Okay. But, uh, okay. Yeah, he, he definitely, definitely pushes you. Um, you could, and, and, you know, if you ever want to record with him, he has places to stay for you. So his place is built. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> yeah. that's, I, I, yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. one note to put to any, like, producers, you know, where, like, I've had uh, a time personally, you know, where it's like, oh, well, does it sound good to you guys? You know, does it sound, it's like, well, we're, that's why we're paying you, man. Like, are you hearing shit that we're not? Because uh, right now yeah. everything sounds like it's gold, you know, unless it's completely offbeat or out of tune, you know. It's like, oh, it's new. You're drooling over it, like. Well, what are you hearing? Because you're outside of the, you know this initial square here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's good to have a good, good producer engineer, though, for sure. Just uh, you know, someone who cares and nicks that guy. Sick, awesome. Is he is he in Chicago? There is he outside the city? He, he's outside the city. He's uh, he's about thirty minutes south from me. He's uh in New Lenox, which is like uh, close to Juliet, which is probably oh, another. Okay. I don't yeah. know. People know Juliet, so it's pretty much there. So, okay, sweet. Uh, one thing I noticed, uh, you know, or, or something that just stuck out to me uh, as far as this latest EP, as opposed to shouting out various bands, you know, sometimes or the record label or different things like that. The band, uh, the LP, dedicates the album to multiple people in Chicago uh, hardcore scene. What can you tell us about these dedications and possibly, you know, uh, any that were personal to you or what were personal to you? Yeah. Um, you know, unfortunately, in the past two years, we've lost lost a lot of brothers and sisters. Um, I personally lost my brother two years ago. Also lost one of my friends um, to a shooting. And then, uh, you know, three years ago, we lost our our bandmate from body bag, Dan bond. Um, so, you know, I feel like a lot of this music that I'm making is for my brother, for my friend, Alexa, for my friend, Dan. Mm. Um, and I, I feel like it's a, it's a big thing to, you know, I, I mean, bands, the bands know who, you know, the bands that we connect with, they know that we appreciate them. And, um, I feel like a lot of, uh, I just feel like the, these records and whatever I'm putting out is going to be dedicated to the people that, because uh, Alexa was our bassist in Peace of Mind, and so oh, okay. she was, she was, Man. yeah, she was take, she was taken a month after my brother passed away. Um, oh so man, it's just yeah. So it it was it was a rough 2020, and then the, the year before is when we lost Dan Bond, um, our guitarist of Body Bag, and he was also the guitarist of uh, No Zodiac. And uh, he was also the guitarist of Streets of Rage, and we might be Damn. another one. But yeah, he was—he was an OG, old, old, old guy. You know, he was one of our old heads. He was a Marine, but um, you know, we were all we were all friends with him, and so that kind of hit a, hit us all hard. Um, so I feel like definitely, and uh, you know, there's this other uh, Gene, our friend Gene. Um, he's part of the Chicago hardcore scene, you know. We lost him, you know. I, I don't know, three or four years ago. We, it just sucks because we kind of lost a lot of people, and I feel like that was the more appropriate thing to do is to shout out to people who we're living for now, you know, because sure. they don't, they're not here, they're not here with us. So, man, uh, that's uh, um, that's deep. I, I, 
I didn't want to get too, I wanted to mention before you start answering, but I didn't want to interrupt as far as I didn't want to get too deep if there was, you know, certain, uh, you know, things that you didn't want to touch on or anything like that. But um, I, I appreciate that, you know, and that's so hard. That's one of those aspects where everybody's so concerned on, you know, everything with, within the last, you know, two years being just COVID related. Meanwhile, you know, you still have shit like that. You still have struggles and, and different things outside of dealing with, you know, just that going on where it's like, life's fucking hard enough, you know? <laughs> so man, I, exactly. I mean, that's, that's, that's tough, but, the, and that's, that's awesome. I mean, as far as just, uh, that was just one thing that kind of, you know, uh, uh, stuck out to me, uh, you know, as far as different, uh, bands, you know, shouting out the bands or shouting out the da 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 da, but, you know, having, um, you know, your local community and, and your local scene in mind, you know, to, to kind of give them, uh, give them the shout and the dedication. That's beautiful, man. I, yeah. I, I appreciate that. It's awesome. I appreciate you asking that question too, man. I really do. With, uh, with, with, you know, kind of wrapping, wrapping up here, uh, you know, I, I'm loving the stuff that you're doing. I'm loving MH chaos. I'm glad that I caught you guys. Uh, I'm really hoping that I can catch you guys again sometime here soon. Uh, this is your opportunity though, to, to let people know, uh, if you're working on new music, if you have some shows coming up, my man, uh, what, what, what do you got going on? Uh, just working on new music. I got a show, uh, April 30th in Milwaukee with Hold My Own and, uh, Grounds of Execution with my math, my math rock band, Wani. Um, Sick. just kind of working. And then, uh, for Chaos Sphere, um, uh, we're going back into the studio, uh, what's today? Thursday. So Thursday, we're going back into the studio. Uh, we have a three song EP coming out. Uh, should be, you guys should be looking out for that. Uh, I would say next two months. I'm really excited for that stuff. Dang, um, uh, I put a lot of work through it. It's very, uh, it's very, it's a Meshuga worship band. So that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> sick. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty much what it is. And, uh, yeah. So, and then I have, uh, Illusion of Choice. Uh, we're in the studio right now. We got some songs recorded. That's more of a, like a, a Weezer. Old Weezer, Ozma sort of band. Uh, Whoa! Just rock. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm trying. I'm just. I'm just trying to play all the music that I like. So, um, what's, what's band is that? Illusion of Fear. Illusion of Choice. Illusion of Choice. Okay. Man, I thought Check. I listened to all these. I didn't hear anything sounding like Weezer <laughs> or Ozma, dude. That that's right. You up like Ozma? I love Ozma. I love We. Actually, Weezer yes! is probably my favorite band of all time. Patrick Wilson oh has taught me God. so much about drums, dude. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. Dude, <laughs> that's yeah. So sick. Me, me and, yeah, me, uh, the guitarist slash singer, man, we love. Uh, he showed he showed me Ozma. His family loves Weezer, and then like you know they they also love Ozma. So from them, Dang. Uh, I learned to love. Yeah, well, Ozma is one of those bands that not a lot of people know, but it's like. If you know them they're like the better reason <laughs> oh dude I, it, Pat, honestly like uh, okay so as far as their records what would you say like i feel like pasadena was where i was i was like right there like that was that was that was the sweet spot for me i, I like rock and roll well it's a part three right? oh yeah part three yeah that is so sick that's <laughs> awesome yeah the, yeah no the, that the is intro it, is man just pasadena like, no, I said that, is that, I think, that. That doesn't sound right. I think that is right. I think that's the their first album, right? No, I can look I, it I'm, up. I'm, talk, I'm, I'm thinking of the one with like the spaceship on the front. It's got Eponine, the track Eponine on it. Uh, Fuck. what is that? Oh, I, go. I got you. I got you. Uh, spending time a double boomtown Pasadena. Is it called Pasadena? Okay, yeah, yeah, dude. Their first album. Or one of their no, first albums? It's, it's one of the later ones. What what does it have on there? There's a track called Eponine. Eponine. It's like E P I O N I N E, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's Pasadena. Yeah, you're right. Dude, listen to that. Listen to that album. It's been I, like I, a, I, a couple I, years I, for me. I need to listen to that. Yeah, I need to listen Amazing. to that. Pinkerton's also. Yeah, Pasadena. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but Bad Pasadena is great. Rock and roll part three, dude. That's that's my jam right there. I, I I had no idea. I normally try to like do some investigating to see these types of things so we can touch on it, but dear lord. <laughs> yeah. no, yeah. Illusion of choice. Yeah, dude, check it out. Illusion of choice. I mean, yeah, we, we 
we we we we covered Lorraine. Uh, we well, we cover Tired of Sex at, at every show usually. Dang. Um, and then we we covered Lorraine at one of our shows. We did really bad. <laughs> we need we need to do <laughs> we need to make up. We didn't do it justice. I won't lie. We didn't have enough practice, but Lorraine is a fucking <laughs> phenomenal track, and uh, we, we're gonna do it justice. But that's awesome Sweet. that you know Osmo. I know there's not a lot Man. of people that know that. So, oh, dude, they're, they're so sick. I wanted to catch one of the times that they were on like the Weezer cruise, but I, I'm just not. I'm not banging like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, it's a lot of yeah, money just for one of those things, but. Man, dude, yeah, they, they had yeah. some some absolutely killer shows too, for sure. I don't know if I mean, I've, have you ever seen Ozma live? No, no, definitely not. I Man. wish you gotta make that happen, no. dude. You know what I'm saying? This next couple of years, I see something, I see him coming around. You're doing some shows. I'm gonna let you know. We'll, yeah, we'll, just, we'll check it out. Yeah, just book. Just yeah. hit him up. Yeah. And we'll the show. There you go. <laughs> uh dude look th this has been absolutely awesome beaver thank you so so much for taking the time today and uh, i i hope to dude. see you soon my man what's your name <laughs> eric eric dude. What, 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 what what's yours <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to find alex alex oh yeah that's yeah right. my name is beaver. <laughs> yeah, my name is Alex. You're Eric. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm yeah. trying to find your name on your page, and you don't have your fucking name. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Talking to this guy, don't even know his name. I, I, yeah, I think yeah. I knew that. I, I knew that once you said, it, I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I try. I, I'll yeah. sign it. You know, when I like when I reach out to anybody, you know, you know, I'll toss it out there too. But other than that, you know, I just keep with the old lo-fi. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. Keep it. Keep it fun yeah, and keep it fun. nasty, dude. <laughs> all right man this, this this has been awesome i i really appreciate you taking the time once again and uh uh you you take care and i'm gonna be looking out for that illusion of choice my man i'm gonna be uh scouting out for that for thank sure you. thank you yeah ch check out the check out the ep we have on, on band camp and then uh yeah looking forward to that i really appreciate you having me man this is this has been awesome i was i was nervous but it turned out really, really great uh, absolutely man i appreciate the time you take care Stay healthy, man. All Stay right, man. safe. See ya. Thank you, man. You too. Later. I really. He's a lo-fi horror guy. Yeah, he's kind of a guy, but he is so lo-fi, lo-fi horror guy. Yeah, be 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 Lo-fi horror guy has been recorded in front of a live studio audience.